Hello friends, my name is Hannah and welcome to a new video on my channel, Hannah Lost the Plot. And um, this is a little bit of a special video for me. It won't be for you, it's fine. Um, but I'm filming this almost a year to the day um, that I uploaded my very first video on YouTube. So I've, I've not been here very long, I've only been here a year. I am a baby. Um, and I thought it would be fun. The first video that I ever uploaded um, was a very belated mid-year freakout tag. Um, and I thought to kind of honor that, I would do the um, end of year book tag um, that was created by Ariel Bissett over at Books Unbound. Um, so I know there are loads of different kind of book tags going around for the end of the year. I think Ariel designed this one more to be done like in like October time as you're kind of coming into the end of the year. Obviously I'm filming it in like mid-November. So um, I have less time left in the year than, uh, than, maybe, uh, than maybe I could have had, but never mind. There are only six questions and I have put them in the comments down below. And I kind of wanted to do this one now because I think it also links, there's a question about reading plans, which I think will also link to channel plans and letting you know a little bit about what I'm thinking for this channel going forward, because obviously I've, I've not been here very long. It has been um, a kind of, really fun learning curve. I've real I feel like I've got a lot more out of my reading this year because I had this channel and I had a kind of dedicated place to go to talk about my reading and I've really enjoyed that. And I want to get better, I guess, at like figuring out the kind of content that I like creating but also the the content that you guys are interested in me creating because I don't want to just scream into the void on here. I'd, I'd like to have a conversation with you, if possible. So, um, so yeah. I don't think I have any more preamble. Should we do the questions? So the first one is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish before the end of the year? Um, do you know what? Kinda, but not too, not too bad. Um, I am someone who reads multiple books at a time and I am a mood reader, but generally I'm pretty good at making a decision about whether I'm gonna carry on reading a book or whether I'm gonna DNF it. So I don't tend to read, kind of start reading a book and then just like put it down for like months on end and then but have the intention that I'm going back to it. I'm either like, I'm gonna read it or I'm not gonna read it. Um, that being said, I do think there's like a compendium of kind of folky sort of tales that I started reading um, for a reading vlog of maybe like a month and a half ago. Um, and for the sake of having like a relatively clean slate coming into the next year, I might wanna read that. I'll insert the cover here so that you can, that you can see it. I can't remember exactly what it's called, something about forests or folklore or woods. Um, I have also been taking part all through this year. Um, Simon over at Footnotes and Tangents on Instagram has been amazingly taking a group of us through a slow read of War and Peace this year where you read a chapter of War and Peace a day. Um, I haven't 100% stuck to his meticulous schedule but it's that's been really nice and we're actually about to start um a little watch party of the BBC adaptation of that so I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to that so at the end of this year um all being well I will finish War and Peace which is a reread for me I, I read War and Peace when I was maybe like 17 and I really liked it then I have enjoyed doing the slow read Simon does such a, he's so thorough in his research. He does such a good job of kind of like bringing everything together. But I definitely think, I am i don't think I'm a slow reader by nature. Um, and I have found that actually going real slow 
I've forgotten to, I mean, the clues in the handle, you know, like Hannah lost the plot. Like, so I'm, I, it's weird for me because I'm still reading the book and I have already forgotten stuff, obviously that I read like back in January and February, but I will be, I will be finishing War and Beast um, and topping it off with that, um, watching that BBC adaptation, which is great from what I remember. And then other than that, I don't, I don't think I have any books that I'm in danger of not finishing. Um, there are books obviously that, um, I would like to get to before the end of the year. Um, but nothing so far that I've, I've started and then put, put down and, and need to go and, and revisit generally, as I say, I'm pretty cutthroat. If it's, if I put it down for longer than a week, I I almost never pick it back up again. So those those things are, have have been DNF'd, I think. And then the second one is, do you have an autumnal book to transition you into the end of the year? If I had filmed this when I was supposed to film it, um, I would have told you about the the books I was planning on reading to get into autumn. But as as luck would happen, I have already read those books, and you can watch them in in this video, which is linked. Um, down below but I, I did have a, a really good stack of books that I think transitioned me beautifully into autumn books like Jen Campbell's poetry collection please do not touch this exhibit um Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner the other Bennett sister by Janice Hadlow yes um and like a few others that I had a I had a lovely autumnal time with those books um but I, I do have books to transition me into kind of more of the um, wintry vibes because uh, I have a couple of really busy weeks at work and then things will start winding down to me a little bit um, at the start of December. So I do have, I'm currently reading Dracula. I do feel like I gravitate more towards classics, particularly in this window, not just like, autumn winter but like particularly like in the run-up to Christmas when I know I'm gonna have some time off work and things are gonna be like a little bit more chilled um I don't know why but I always feel like if I'm reading a classic I need a bit more like cognitive space <laughs> um, so uh I I do want to pick up some more classics I'm reading Dracula as I said at the minute I really want to get to um, The Call by Edith Ayrton Warner, which is just there in the, it's the Persephone book that you can see behind me, um, because I've never read a Persephone book and they are all kind of um, classics or more recent classics. Um, so I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to get to those for more of like a winter transition. And then I'm pretty sure I bought last year I think I bought um, a collection by Truman Capote about like Christmas. So it's not the transition that Ariel was asking about, but I think I'm gonna do some of those to like get me into like cozy winter vibes. Um, then is there a new release you're still waiting for? Um, not not really um i don't i don't think um i ha we've just had the the big day in in november where um i forget what it's called but you know like all the fucking books come out in like that week um at least in the uk anyway uh so lots of things have come out already um but in in some ways yes which brings me on to talking about um one of the things i've got planned for the channel that i would like to explore because as well as reading I do really like uh watching films and tv shows um and I thought it might be fun to do some paired like paired reading and watching around adaptations um so a release I am waiting for is not the release of a book but the release of a couple of films that um I'm planning on doing that with so the idea is that I will they will almost always be books that I haven't read before. So I'll read the book and then I'll watch the adaptation and have a little chat about it. Fingers crossed we're trying to like sync our diaries, but my friend Farmer, who you may have seen in this video on my channel, um, she is hopefully gonna join me for at least a couple of those so we can have a little chit chat 
about that. So the first one I'm waiting for this year is um, the adaptation of Leave the World Behind by Ruben Alam, which is coming out in a couple of weeks, I think. So I need to pick that book up ASAP, but it's only a slim little thing, so I, I don't think it's gonna take me too long. Um, but yeah, I, I wanna do that and I'm waiting for the release of the film. And then there is Poor Things as well by Alistair Gray, but that I don't think is coming out until January. So I have a, a little bit of, of time to get to that one. So not book releases, but uh, some film releases of books that I intend to read. Yeah. And there, okay, question four is what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Um, well, I've already mentioned, I've already mentioned the Persephone book. I, I, I would like for not another year to go by with me not having read a Persephone book. Um, and then, I don't know. So for the last few years, I have done the Storygraph um, Read the World Challenge and the Genre Challenge. I fell a little bit out of that this year. Um which I'm a bit, am I disappointed that I didn't, that I haven't finished that yet? I don't think I'm disappointed because I, I think what I've done instead is I've, I've mood read more and I've done vlogs more around what I'm actually reading um, and picking stuff up off my shelves. I also struggled to find some books that I was, genuinely interested in reading that I could get from my library without having to buy new ones. So I do have, I actually, conveniently, I've got them stacked here to remind me that I want to read them. Um, I do have two books from that Read the World Challenge that I haven't, that I have, that I haven't read yet. Um, so this is a um, Pakistani novel. It's The Idle Stance of the Tipler Pigeon by Safina Danish Elahi and Elahi and it looks like that Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, and then I have um Dazzling by Chickadilly Emma Lumadu and I do I do want to read both of these both of these books it's just whether or not I want to read them right now um it's tricky, isn't it? With I, I think sometimes, I think reading challenges are great to um, kind of diversify your reading and, and make sure you're reading a little bit out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, I also think forcing yourself to, to read a book at a time that you're maybe not feeling it, for me anyway, um, I don't feel like it would be fair to pick up either of these books until I genuinely feel like I want to read either of these books. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna force myself to, you know, film those. Because I, I did say one of the things, um, coming back to channel plans, I was gonna talk about channel plans at the end, but I'm just gonna chat about them as, the, as they crop up as I answer the questions. Because one thing that I said I was gonna do on my channel this year was, do a reading vlog for each of the books that I read for the Read the World prompt. So I've done, I think, five of them and they'll be linked down below. So like I've done Italy and Argentina and I did have a nice time with them, but this is where I need your honest feedback. Um, I don't think, I don't think, and you could tell me otherwise, that vlogs where I read one book are necessarily as uh, popular. I think people prefer vlogs where I read a variety of different books. Um, I actually also think I prefer vlogs where I read a, a variety of, of books. So what I might do is like a belated mop up at some point of of books that I meant to read for for those challenges or books that I still want to get to but um yeah I've, I've got a couple on my shelf as I say I'm not going to force myself 
to get to them though. Um, and then is there anything else I want to read before the end of the year? I would like to read Companion Piece by Ali Smith. Um, would I? Mm. See, I either want to read it before the end of the year or I maybe want to time it so that it's the first book I read over next year. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, a vlog that I'm thinking of filming over um, the kind of festive period. I do have a number of authors on my shelf where I have multiples of multiple books by them or where they are just authors that I have a sneaky suspicion I'm going to really like but that I haven't read yet so essentially like reading authors that I've been sleeping on you know like ones that I think are gonna end up being favorite authors just based on sometimes you guys telling me look I'm holding my slipper sorry <laughs> based on you guys um yeah, based on you guys saying, oh, I think you'd like this author or friends of mine saying, you've not read that person, you'd love that person. So there are three authors that particularly stick out in my head as fitting in that category. And they are Sarah Waters, Sarah Moss and Patricia Highsmith. They're three authors that I can't believe I haven't read yet. And I'm pretty convinced I'm going to really like. So I might do a vlog where I read their books and that might be a nice one over the end like over the Christmas period to kind of like read some books that might end up being favorite authors or you know I will just continue to read whatever the fuck I want because that's generally that's generally what I do um question five is there a book that you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year. Um, yeah, I think there's always, I, at the minute, I have definitely like some favorite, but I think I've had such a good reading year and I've read loads of books that I've really, really loved. But just without looking back over everything I've read, I don't think I have like a standout, this is my absolute favorite book that I've read this year. I think I've got like a, collection of brilliant books so it's definitely possible that something something will emerge as being like the best thing I've read I, if I read companion piece by Ali Smith I mean Ali's always got to, at the minute I think winter by Ali Smith is probably my favorite book that I've read this year but companion piece made pivot to the post so you know um there's that I also think possibly the Patricia Highsmith the Sarah Waters the Sarah Moss they could do it potentially um I have just watched I've been I've been so behind because I've been busy and I've been reading and I've been doing content annoyingly what that has meant is that I've fallen behind on watching some of my favorite booktubers <laughs> so I spent some time this weekend re like going back over like things that I've missed and I watched a video from Eric um, at The Lonesome Reader and he has had his book bog for 10 years this year and he went back and picked one book from every year um, like the best book from every year and there were so many titles um, that he spoke about that I thought sounded amazing and I think um, we have quite similar taste in quite similar taste in books so I may also just be seeing if I can get some of those because they sounded great. Um, actually, I think Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss was, was one of the ones and that is the Sarah Moss that I have on my, on my bookshelf. So yeah, yes, essentially. I think, I think we could, we could have some, we could have a new favorite book for sure. For sure, always. Um, I kind of think like, why pick up a book if you don't think it's potentially gonna be a book that you're gonna love? Like there are so many books. I, I always pick up a book thinking, oh, I might really love this, you know? Um, anyway, last question is, have you already started making reading plans for next year? Uh, yes and no. 
Um, I am slap bang in the middle of a um, ADHD hyperfocus where I am cataloging <laughs> all of my books. I wanted to do that at the end of this year um, because I'm interested in, in the books that I own and the ones that I've read of the ones that I've owned and where the patterns are in my reading and all that good stuff. And I'm also kind of good with a spreadsheet. I love a good spreadsheet. A lot of my job is spreadsheets. So I'm, I've, I've been cataloging and I'm kind of halfway through. Um, and I, I would like for some of my reading next year to be informed by things that I'm noticing as I do that process. For example, I have so far catalogued about 350 books that I own. Not one of them is written by a Welsh author. I've got Northern Ireland, I've got Scotland, I've got England. I don't, I don't, ha current, I mean, I know I've got some Dylan Thomas upstairs that I haven't catalogued yet, but like, please give me your contemporary Welsh authors that you love because I don't, I don't want to not own any books by Welsh authors. I love Wales. So that's one thing, for example, that I, that I'm noticing. I also think, um, I'm gonna, <laughs> my partner just throwing away my old wellies, um, I also think I'm going to uh, really revisit my little jar of um, vlog prompts that I've been doing to try and get my um, on my physical TBR, like unread books that I have in my house, down um, and do more of that because I think I got a little bit distracted by um, some of the other challenges that I was doing, like the Read the World challenge and things like that. Whereas I think I wanna focus a little bit more on either reading books that I already own or finding books that I want to read based on an identified gap in my reading. I also think I just wanna um, use my library more, uh, read more, for I guess kind of follow, it's that balance between I've got a chunk of books on my shelf that I have already bought, um, that I've already spent money on, that I do want to read, but I also think sometimes I get distracted by the books that I feel I have to read and I don't always allow myself to follow my curiosity for like just what I'm currently interested in. So I think I would, I would like to find a balance in my reading between making sure that I'm, I'm getting to these books that I have already bought, but also that I am allowing myself to be flexible and free in my reading. But as I do that, to use my library to do that, instead of just going out and buying all the books that I'm a little bit curious about, I also think possibly I might need to unhaul some unread books because I think there are some things on here that are books that I look at and I think, yeah, I'll probably, like I might like that, but is it ever going to feel like a reading priority? I don't know. I don't know. So no solid plans, but I would really like um, to hear from you in the comment section down below. Well, firstly, I would like you to answer those questions because I am interested in, in your answers too. Um, but also I, I, like, I would like to, to know, yeah, what, what's, what have maybe, if you've been on my channel for a while um, and, or you've watched a few, a few of my videos, like what have your favorites been? What's the sort of stuff that, that you like most? What would you be interested in seeing? I am curious. I can't, I'm not making any fucking promises because if you tell me to read a load of shit I don't want to read, then I'm not going to do it. But, um, but obviously like, I do want to, like I made this channel to connect with other readers. So I would like to connect with you, please. Um, right. My dog's outside in the cold and he really wants to come in and he's 
He's coming now. So, can you hear those paws? Here he comes. Time to say bye. Bye. No, Lauren, come here. Come here. You say bye to the people. No. Oh, you're confused. Are you confused? Come on. Come here. <laughs> it's too interested in the ring light. Bye, friends. Thank you.